Here's a simple yet powerful idea that can help you take a large step toward useful and valuable agentic workflows. I have to warn you, this is one of those things that sounds really obvious after you hear it because it's hiding in plain sight. The idea is simple. It's called the two-way prompt. So what is this, why is it useful, and how can it help you build better AI agent workflows? Two-way prompting happens all the time. In real collaborative workspaces, you are effectively two or more agents prompting each other to drive outcomes. Two-way prompting happens all the time. When you're at work, with friends, with family, online, in comment sections, on PR reviews, you ask a question, your coworker responds. They ask a question, you respond. Now let's double click into what this looks like for your agentic tools, right? In agentic workflows, you are the critical node in a communication process between you and your AI agents that are aiming to drive outcomes. In most agentic workflows, we fire off one prompt or configure some system prompt and that's it. But we're missing a ton of opportunities here that we can unlock using two-way prompts. Let me show you a concrete example with Ada. So Ada, of course, is our proof of concept personal AI assistant. And let me just go ahead and kick off this workflow so I can show you exactly how useful the two-way prompt can be. Ada, let's create some example code. Dan, I don't see a URL on your clipboard. Please paste one into your editor. Okay, so right away, my assistant found that there wasn't a URL to create example code from. And that's what this workflow is gonna do for us. This agentic workflow is going to create example code based on a URL that we give it. So it's gonna scrape it and create a nice single file where we can run code based on the documentation. So my personal AI assistant is actually prompting me for information. So. Let me go ahead and open up this blog. This is Simon Wilson's blog. He's a prolific engineer, a true chronic developer, just creating products left and right. He has this really, really great blog post where he's concatenating an entire code base to prompt using Cloud 3 Opus, right? So basically he's taking a bunch of files, combining them into a single prompt, a single piece of text that you can then run a prompt on. So what I'm gonna do here is use this as our prompt value. So I'm gonna go ahead and just paste this in. This is gonna be the example code that we wanna look at. So I'm gonna save that file, close, and let our assistant look at that. Dan, I found the URL. I'll scrape it and whip up some example code. Any preferences on what the code should focus on? Okay, awesome. So, you know, another back and forth prompt. This is the key value of the two-way prompt. So now my assistant is asking me for additional information. What do we wanna focus on? So, you know, basically I just want an end-to-end -end example of runnable code where we can utilize Simon's files to prompt for Claude. So, so concise end to end example using Simon's code to combine files to run a prompt against. Mirror his code as closely as possible. So I'm gonna save and just close that. Sounds and then good, Dan. Focusing on a concise end to end example using Simon's code to combine files and run a prompt. Mirroring his code closely. Generating the code now. Awesome. So, you know, my assistant is saying exactly what's happening. Um, I really like this touch of the personal AI assistant. It's a conversational um, event where you're talking back and forth and really feels like we're talking to a computer in a more collaborative way where we're driving outcomes together, which is really, really cool. So you can see there, there's the first version coming out. This is going to run a prompt chain. I'm not going to dig into the code in this video. Definitely check out the previous video where we walked through some of this code in detail. We have the LLM agent router. You can see I've added a couple new agent workflows here, but long story short, you know, we're running this example code workflow, which has a agentic workflow that has this two-way prompt interaction. And then we have a prompt chain where we are scraping the content and then we're running several code generation prompt chains to make sure that we're just getting code and then we're gonna save it to a file. I'll make sure that the previous video is in the description where we went in more depth of how exactly all of this is working. Let's see how our assistant's doing. Dan, I've added Added getting your file checker.py to the working directory. Anything else? Awesome. So we've restarted that loop. You can see that took quite a bit of time. This agentic workflow is using the latest GPT and the text to speech, speech to text functionality. Still a little slow. We're working on that. But let's go ahead and just see the results here. So let me stop my assistant here and let's open up this file and let's take a look at this. So nice. This looks pretty spot on. This looks exactly like Simon's code. That looks 
nearly identical. It's got some really clean comments for us explaining exactly what's happening on each line. Super useful. I'm not going to run this. It's not the point of this video, but you can imagine this is going to give us a huge head start when we're looking at new code bases, new documentation. This workflow provides a lot of value and it provided it in a pretty clean, simple way where our personal AI assistant is prompting us for information, right? So let's go ahead and run one more workflow. I'm going to show this off in one more example, but let's go ahead and create a view component. So let's say Python main nine, Ada, let's create a new view component. Dan, let's generate a view component. Please choose an image. Okay, so again, we're starting to hop into a workflow here. So my assistant is asking me to give it an image. So we're using the new GPT-4 vision with JSON model from OpenAI. My assistant is prompting me, the user, the builder, the engineer to give it a file, right? So it needs a file to look at. And we'll go ahead and use this uh, pre 10K subs. So this is a you know simple text view of before the channel hit 10K subs. So we'll just go ahead and drop that in and we'll leave this up so we can compare, right? So go ahead and we'll hit pre 10K subs. Got it, Dan, generating that view component now. So there's a base 64 print message. There's a component. There's a prompt for generating Sounds good, that. Dan. I finished the view component and called it channel analytics card dot view. Any edits needed? Okay, so here's another really cool two-way prompt. Ada is opening up those files and it's showing me exactly what we have here. So I have a simple view web application running here and all we're gonna do is place this new component which should be placed right in the components directory, nice. All we're gonna do is say, uh, what was that called? Channel analytics and let's go ahead and get this imported. And bam, so you can see there, that's the component generated. This looks pretty good. So there's the current version, there's the original version. So not too bad, it's got this blue background. It's got green on the entire lower text and needs a little bit of space. And so all I'm gonna do here is create a simple prompt that's going to you know request some of these changes. So in the prompt, I'm just gonna say, let's add more padding and only the plus 645 should be green trailing text is gray. So I'll just save that, let that run, close this as well, hop back to our assistant and let's see how that plays out. Sounds good, Dan. I've updated the view component. What should we tackle next? Awesome, okay, so that's finished. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Nice. So you can see here we have some additional padding, not the exact padding that I wanted. I wanted some vertical padding. I should have been more specific there, but we did get padding and we did get this trailing text in gray. And of course we can look at the component to see exactly how that manifested. And yeah, so as you would expect, it added that span text gray using Tellwind. Awesome stuff here. So really simple examples, but I hope that they show you, you know, the power and the potential of using these two-way prompts in your agentic workflows. You can really get a lot more done and reduce complexity of your system by just having your AI agents prompt you, the driver of the workflow. And there are many manifestations of how this can look. So that's a couple simple examples of what the two-way prompt looks like. You can imagine much more complex back and forth systems where your agent needs information from you, where it's not sure on how to, you know, phrase an email or it doesn't know exactly how you want your code to look or it's asking questions about what to develop next and this can all be happening in the background right where your agent has done a bunch of work for you and it needs some review it needs some of your input to make next steps in a really concrete way so so if that makes sense and you can see the value of you know adding some two-way prompts to your agentic workflows hit the like hit the sub and let's address the elephant in the room right you might be thinking wait isn't this just human in the loop this is a like common paradigm of having the human provide feedback and 100%. Two-way prompts are multi-step human in the loop. I would say the big differentiator is that you're not limited to just simple text prompt responses to just giving feedback. You can provide all types of feedback. In our example, we showed off us selecting specific files. We showed off us pasting URLs we want to be examined. We showed off providing feedback for improvements on our view component. And there are many, many, many more ways to add multi-step human in the loop, AKA two-way prompts into your agentic systems. The key insight here is that you, the engineer, the product builder, and the user are an essential guiding force in your agent agentic workflow, right? Your workflow should be centered around you and your users, right? Whoever's using your application, whoever's using your product or tool, this is the key insight. Don't get caught up in trying to build agentic workflows just because it's agentic, right? It's the new Kool-Aid to drink. It's the cool thing. Everyone's doing it. This is what engineering is all about now. Like, of course, that's important, but always focus on the end result for you and your users. Add two-way prompts and multi-step human in the loop 
to drive results in your agentic workflows. This can be especially useful as stepping stones as you're developing your fully agentic workflows. Don't be afraid to create some, you know, partial agentic workflows with the human in the loop, right? Using these two-way prompts, you know, especially as these co-pilots and assistants are built out and as you build your own agentic workflows, keep in mind that you and your users are the critical asset in this communication process. I want to close out with one more idea here, and that is where this is all going, right? How I see this breaking down. So I see three tiers of agentic workflows increasing in complexity as we go down the list. There's humans prompt. This is us. We are effectively pulling information from our large language models. And then we get to this next level where we're two-way prompting. In the two-way prompts, we're doing both pooling and pushing, right? Our agents are pushing information back to us, asking us questions. I think right now, when we're talking about agentic workflows and applications that are built on top of LLMs, we're doing a lot of number one and some of number two, right? Where the user and the agentic workflow talk back and forth to each other via a domain-specific UI UX. And this is very powerful. There's a lot to be uncovered here. I predict that most applications will end up in this second zone. In the future, this will all change and it'll be primarily agents pushing to us, right? Our agents will be the one prompting us. And this is where things accelerate to the next level where you wake up in the morning and your agents have been doing a ton of work for you overnight, right? They're responding to emails, they're reviewing code, they're writing code for you, they're generating new ideas for your business, they're setting up plans, they're monitoring your key infrastructure, they're, you know, they're looking at your GCP cloud, your Azure cloud, making sure everything's stable, they're reporting anomalies to you. And then, you know, when you wake up and you, you know, go to your device, whatever app it is, whatever tool you're using, they're going to ask you a bunch of questions on things they need your input on, right? It's going to be this really interesting flippening of who's prompting who. And that's really the key insight here, right? You, the engineer and the product builder and your users are the essential guiding force. And it's important to utilize that. Definitely dig into this idea. Put yourself in your agentic workflows more often so that you can simplify things and also really just drive the result that you're looking for, right? That is the reason we're building on these agentic systems. It's a huge, powerful unlock, but it's really to drive a result for us and our users. So that's the end game. Our agents will be prompting us. Right now, we're building and working with tier one agentic workflows and two-way prompt workflows, right? Where it's not just you firing off some initial prompt and your workflows doing everything. You can create a lot more intricate, interesting results with these two-way prompts. So I think that's where things are going. I hope this idea was helpful for you. In future videos, we'll continue discussing and building our personal AI assistant. We'll be pushing our AI coding assistance and our AI coding skills even further. And we'll keep building great AI agents that can operate these agentic workflows on our behalf. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if you like this content, if you like these ideas, you know what to do. Stay focused, keep building, and I'll see you in the next one.